Hey there, Dan the Culinary Libertarian here, out in my little earth box mixed up garden with this green thing above me. So when we were here last, we were just putting the little sprouts into, <laughs> into the earth box. And so now the Brussels sprouts, which were kind of small, are getting kind of big. The beans, well, I'm gonna go for a little bit of an undercarriage ride here. We got a little bit of baby bean action going on. And the tomatoes, well, it's going the other side, so we're not gonna get all sunned up, but that is one of several tomato plants. There's one each. There's two kinds, so there's one, there's three kinds, but I've lost track of what's what. And allergies, oh my goodness, the allergies are so bad. So I have two tomato plants in this earth box. And then in the sprouting stage, a couple of them were really good buddies. So these two, hard to tell, but there they are. Those two are chums, and those two are chums. So. I recognize the crowding together problem may stymie the growth, but it seemed pretty obvious that pulling them apart would absolutely stymie their growth by killing them. So growing a little bit versus growing not at all seemed an easy choice. Bugs. Um, so then there's still, so we have, we have some okra coming up. And if you are not from the South, you don't really appreciate how fabulous homegrown okra is. More tomatoes, more sunflowers, more Brussels sprouts for the oh, neighbor lady. Bright, bright, bright. And then uh, tomatoes over there. Yeah, dartboard. Tomatoes and sunflowers and more tomatoes just going on and on. So the reason we started this as far as showing you what's going on, and I've never grown Brussels sprouts before. I like to eat them, but, and I, you know, at the uh, the supermarkets in the fall, you see the stock with them. So this is, this is pretty cool. So one of the things that's kind of fun to look at is, now I've got three giant ones, one medium one and then two babies. And the good thing about that is, I'm gonna end up having a continued rotation of, or continued harvest, I suppose, of, of Brussels sprouts. So they start out really, Really puny. Let's go over here. These aren't looking very hot. I just watered them because they're in they're in little um, little pots still. They're for the neighbor lady. So they come out. They start out really teeny tiny. It's those wee little things, and then holy moly, then they go to uh, reach down here. So we get a little guy like this which is kind of cute, and then into these monsters, which I, I know they grow on the stalk. I, I keep looking every day, waiting to see something. I don't know what happens, so we're learning. So it's, it's coming. I know the, I have a gardener friend, a virtual friend in Texas, and, you know, well, it's Texas, so it's hot. So she's got lots of stuff coming from her garden. We're getting there. I got lots of flowers coming. I've, oh, just <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's going to be fun. The other thing that was a real surprise that I didn't know about. I cleared some ivy away from a spot that I didn't want it, and asparagus showed up. And I knew it was there because when asparagus goes to seed, it makes that really, really tall, spindly thing. I said, "Oh my gosh, I know what that is." So there was one other little pencil asparagus. So well, that's cute. So I picked it and ate it and another one came up. No, I didn't know that happened. I thought asparagus was a, here it is in the springtime, that's it. So it put up another one. Well, I'll put that uh, and let my wife eat that one. So I don't see another one yet, but I'm letting the thing that went to seed go to seed because maybe we can have a little artich artich uh, artichoke, no, asparagus patch. That would be cool. So anywho, 
Uh, the earth boxes are pretty stinking amazing, and that's why I like them. The other thing is they're portable, and they're always watered, and anyway, got lots of tomatoes coming. Hope you have a good summer.